Okay, seems to work. Let's delete them real quick. Okay, I need probably this, but in a different browser because switching Windows and Mac OS is real pain in this. Let's see if I'm logged in here. Of course I'm not. Let's see if it even works. Yep. Login. Authentificator. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. Authenticator. Yep. Twitch. 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 Yep. Password. Two five three. Eight three eight. Remember my computation. Accept cookies. Okay, we have dashboard. Uh, this is muted. Do I have chat? Yeah, I have chat. Zvirdu, hi. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Okay, so I don't my balance. Okay. Okay, so we have hopefully have sound. We have music. Should I put in music? Well, we should put some music, right? Mm. That would require some magic. Okay, let's try to put in, putting some music. Nah, no, nah, it's a too hard. No music today. Uh, well, there will be music, but it will be just for me. You won't hear it. Unfortunately, sorry about that. But it is what it is. Yeah. Every time, every time. Okay, I probably want to put it in here as well. That. Okay, so uh, hopefully there will be recording of this, and we will you will see it on YouTube later. Okay, so the idea is what I'm going to work on. I have to do this with music. And this headphones. I don't need headphones. Why do I need headphones? If I'm not using music, I don't, right? Okay, cool. Uh, hopefully my sound will be even better now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what we're going to do today. Uh, so I started a little project last week, and this is a closure apple. Uh, so closure apple for Sublime Text. So this is Sublime Text. And I've been using it for a long time. I really like the editor, but I don't like closure integrations that, that exist for it. And we are going to take a look at different stuff that is there and see what I'm not happy with and maybe how we should proceed. Uh, hi, Mig. Um, yeah. Welcome. 
So, uh, what I'm thinking of starting with, as you can see, there's lots of going on already. Uh, so the repo is in GitHub. You can start, you can try it, but it's not ready or anything. It, it kind of works a little bit, but it's not really. Let's put motivation here. Okay, so there are, uh, and let's just go start with the state of the art, like what repos exist right now for Sublime, for Clojure, and what I am not happy with, right? So there are two parts to, to REPL. Uh, one is client and the other one is uh, server. So the client is pretty simple. So the simplest client would be um, just command line client, right? So like you go to let go that go here and we start um, let me see what we start we start triple I think and this what it does is it's a really simple script I have a couple of scripts because I, like, I couldn't remember those commands I don't want to lose them but what it does basically it starts closure with this uh, command line option start server oh no 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 uh, it's actually what you not what you want really well, it kind of, uh, so yeah, this starts a socket REPL. Okay, okay, well, sorry, uh, sorry for blushing. So the simple thing is uh, this, right? You start and you are in REPL immediately and you can eval right, right here. Okay, so we start with that. Um, that, would, that would be clients, right? So clients, uh, command line. Command line needs terminal window and not machine friendly, right? So what it means is uh, this is the way I've been working with Clojure for a long time. Uh, and what it means is that you basically you write code here in Sublime, then you switch to terminal and try it out here. Sometimes I just don't even start the REPL, I just rebuild my application and rerun it from Sublime scripting system, right? Um, so this is kind of painful uh, way to work with, so I want to get away from it, okay? And there are two existing uh, REPLs, one is Sublime REPL and another one is Tootkin uh, for Sublime. For other, client, for other editors are probably better alternatives, Emax I heard is pretty good. Like for others, like people have figured stuff out for Sublime, not so much. So let's go and uh, package control, uh, install package, and we're going to install this um, REPL, Sublime REPL, right? And we are going to install to the game. Okay. What? Whatever. So yeah, I, I, I think they have been installed. Okay, so now if we type REPL, we have this sublime REPL commands, right? And you can say closure and what it does, I believe, is it starts lining in, kind of. I think that's what it does, right? And uh, we don't have project.clj here, but if I would, it would use project.clj probably that is in my console. Oh yeah, okay, so, and let's switch to, I know, to some yeah, we have here. Let's try to evaluate this. And I don't really see eval yeah yeah so as far as i understand if i understand co uh, correctly is yeah run an interpreter inside sublime text to view tab it's very old it's uh, like and it has support for multiple language so languages so 
uh, it's not closure oriented really so what it does is it just starts a terminal inside which is uh, not bad actually so it's kind of good but um, this is not what we want right so you can you can't okay i i have no idea how this is supposed to work but you see what's what's what my problem is with it right so uh i i can't even start it okay and i couldn't figure it out okay so let's see um yeah let's put clients command line um, something like this needs terminal window sublime repl and this is just terminal opened in a sublime tab uh, which is like arguably maybe switching to tab inside sublime is better than uh switching to different application uh, but there are probably more gener general solutions for that I th I, i've heard there's plugin for running terminal inside basically what you need a terminal okay so and requires line project uh, so line also sometimes is, it's there there was a point when it was the togo go to project format now it's kind of isn't uh, anymore not always it was good really it was it has it was starting slow but other than that everything else about it was great perfect way better than current devs eden and uh, clj command but clj is faster unfortunately so it's like with clj um yeah so sublime example is no go okay so the next one is to cane and that cane is more like what i expect it to be so it has connect disconnect so we actually can connect to REPL, local host and i believe we are on port 5555 uh connection to 5555 refused okay i don't remember i think it um it expects socket REPL. so okay yeah um hmm. I think it expects socket travel. So let's start socket travel and try it again. Closure local host 555. Boom. We connect it. And again, as you can see, it is um it's a separate tab, right? Which is uh, but it's at least it's kind of REPL-ish. So we can evaluate no. What do you mean not connected? We, we just connected, literally like just connected. the fuck hmm. I, I think I know what is going on kind of oh no no wait reported gain syntax that okay. I remember reading something about that it requires yeah 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 so like yeah so this is like kind of better right so what i like about it is that it's actually REPL. you can like actually send from your editor you can send expression to the REPL for evaluation right but uh, and you can connect to existing REPL. doesn't require like um uh, relies on socket REPL, okay, which is um, so. What socket REPL is is it's um, like way inside closure to run um, a REPL for you as your application start. But like the 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 difference is it it's it's bundled with closure, right? Any closure application, if it depends on closure main, can run this REPL, so you don't have to think in advance about it. And this is what I think uh, is very important, right? So you don't have to change your application in order to connect to it, right? You just uh, specify some common light options. But uh, if you try to 
connect so we so this script starts repo on port 5555 we connect it to this and you see as we connect we actually see this um, invitation like user and we can do so basically it's the same repo that is closure closure main is um but um but over network right so <laughs> basically what it does it it takes your command line client uh, and inserts it over the network and it has same problems as command line has and uh those are basically then it's not machine friendly okay so the relies on socket triple which is uh plus i don't know if we need to say what's good what's wrong but yeah okay so uh but yeah uh, it, it still uh has separate window open separate tab game um or requires and and like unlike requires local lane project so this is a downside of sublime repl another downside is that you can connect to our network because it looks into your current folder right so you can't connect to production for example and this is online something network network friendly requires separate tab requires custom closure syntax and this is i don't really understand yet at least right so what, what what happens is unless you set your syntax to closure.k it, it wouldn't work it wouldn't send uh, your expressions into the for your evaluation right and then what we do have here interrupt evaluation okay so i have this let's say Let's see if you can interrupt it. Yeah, I can interrupt it. Cool. Uh, let's say, let's say I want to relate this. Then I want to relate this. So yeah, this this is another problem with, uh, for example, I think it's, it's this is a problem with socket triple. Oh my God, this scroll doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you see, there's lots of problems. Okay, so uh, like uh, the problem with this is, is I started evaluating something long, right? and it's like in the background it outputs something to my std out okay that's fine but that prevents me from evaluating something else right and this will this is the part i don't understand like why cannot i for example print something else in fact i can yeah it just ignores my input now and unless i uh interrupt current evaluation and then everything else was that was has been um queuing uh we'll we'll evaluate okay so yeah we pr i think we probably have um, to write this maybe we do it like this i don't know it probably wouldn't be like can interrupt evaluation can't eval if other evaluation pending okay so maybe it's not a set of that important use case but maybe it is i don't know uh but anyways yeah so that's our my complaints about tutkin otherwise it's been pretty great oh i think the other thing that i don't like about it is that it tries okay see like i don't like when something auto completes breakers for me because i like it's just something i don't expect and i, I always get it wrong because i don't expect, expect that something will type something for me and i have a you know, habit of uh, writing code in certain ways and when uh, something like that happens like for example i expect if i select some code right and press parent 
it will replace the text uh, instead it uh, wraps it in a pen but maybe you can get used to it i don't know i'm not used to it and i don't like it the other thing it does i see i believe it formats code for me which is maybe good maybe not good i don't know <laughs> right uh but i would certainly like to have um saying it like maybe i don't want it maybe i do want it i don't know clerk with you test markers can get key bindings and scratch you okay and it also does like um, lots of other things like for example After complete brackets, indent your code, and it, it's a shame actually because I believe developer of Tutkin uses uses uh, my syntax for that, so I kind of supposed to like it, I guess, but, uh, at least from what I, I saw. Uh, yeah, Nikita go for this proposal of closure in the nation rules and call his closure in even syntax definition, some parts of which are shamelessly stole. Which is great. Uh, like I'm I'm glad this was useful. And maybe in indentation rules at some point I would either steal from from Tutkin or from or writing myself. Maybe I don't know. Uh, closure and index even syntax definition I wrote myself. I have my own uh, closure syntax. As you can see here, syntax closure. So closure is default closure and I have closure C, this one. And it's, this is a package sublime, I believe it's called sublime closure. I haven't advertised it. I haven't even put it on package control, I believe, but it's kind of useful and kind of like works great. And I've been using it. Maybe I should turn it into a package at some point. Maybe now is a good moment to do that. But the idea of it is that default syntax for closures that goes with sublime text is very, very bad. And my syntax is much more pedantic. It handles much more edge cases like this is valid keyword and should be uh, marked as valid. Uh, and this is, I don't know what's going on here or here. Like many cases which are valid in closure and un unrecognized by default syntax, but uh, correctly recognized by my own syntax. Okay, uh, so I would like to, to, to use it really. Hmm. Okay, so this feature we are going to use. Um, Namespace switching. Yeah, and the uh, token is great. Uh, let's say it's very full feature, right? So tests, test indentation of the complete, I think something like that. Yeah, uh, but uh, very full feature. Let's say it's very full feature. I, um, so my my take on it is it's probably good but like when you have opinions it's hard to please everyone so i would probably like something that does one thing but does it well like evaluation evaluating closure code for example and um that would be great for me okay so uh, this is it yeah this okay so my sublime dies that just died and unfortunately it happens more often than i would like okay how do i close this view i think it's this yeah okay so this is tutkin right i would like the good part of it parts of it if it's working you can use it right now um yeah i i would like my own shot and i also like to take a look at closure ecosystem right now uh the second part of this ecosystem is servers uh, so this is a part that runs on okay let me 
it's probably con or something like project. Oh, okay, so this is not a con, this is a fact, right? Uh, this is a con and this is a con. Okay. Okay, now servers. So the simplest server we can have is, as I said, socket server or server socket. So I think it's socket server, server socket. Is it either one of these, right? And uh, the function to call that would be, I think, this one? Oh, uh, this one. Okay, so the circuit server just serves the REPL over the socket, and this is uh, the REPL itself, right? So, okay, so what it does, I already showed you this is uh, socket server, so it basically starts uh, the command line closure REPL over the network. Okay, so our problem with it is that it is not machine friendly, and this is okay so the pro it comes bundled with closure and pro it can be run like uh, through the option okay uh, can be run through an option without modifying app code. Okay, so, um, so what it means, if you have your application, you have your main function, blah, 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 you can actually specify something like minus D, something, something, socket uh, REPL equals, and then there is some uh, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not using this right now, this uh, goes directly into this use like this starts the server as a main function but you can have main function and start your socket server in the background you can actually start multiple socket servers so this is good right we want that i definitely want that we don't want to play with our application code hmm zoom a little bit yeah of course let's let's just increase font size. Yeah, worked. I hope it worked. Okay, and I hope it's more readable right now. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Like, not machine friendly. What does it mean? Okay, so um, it because like in the beginning servers or sockets servers. Oh, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, in the beginning, REPLs were like meant to be run in a terminal, like we, we like we did that uh, here, right? And when you're in terminal, you can do some things that, um, like it's interactive, like you expect a human on the other side, not a machine, right? And so human can deal with stuff like this. For example, if I say some send something like this, evaluation doesn't start, right? Uh, because like input is incomplete and it, it hangs and I have to finish it. If I send something like this, the syntax error. But if I send something like this, there's nothing. Okay, uh, then uh, also this this prompt, as you can see here, right? So the prompt is, uh, let me increase font here as well. Um, yeah. So what I'm saying, ah, yeah, this prompt. So this prompt, there's no way, like it, it just is, is, it is just printed at some point. So for example, if I do something like, um, let's say, uh, <laughs> if I do something stupid like this, right? Um, yeah, so this is the output of my print and this is a return value and this is prompt. So like if I am machine, there's no way to tell which one is prompt is which one is output. And like inside um, editor, I probably don't want prompts. And there's also, you can evaluate multiple things and once, um, stuff like that, right? 
so it's very inconvenient and if you for example do something like future uh, do thread sleep thousand print on user all right and now now it's like even left in incorrect state so this was the first prompt and my cursor was here but then feature completes like it waits for one second and it prints the studio out here and now my cursor is here there are two prompts here like what the fuck but if you're like person actual person on the site you can deal with it right you can um like yeah it's, it's not a big deal you can you can get used to it um but if you're machine it's it's no go like you have lots of pain with it okay so what do we have else here uh we have p repo so p repo is relatively new i'm not like uh, going in historical order but uh, i think it's i think it's okay uh, it's probably uh, like feature complete order okay so let's say we go to server.clj in closure so it's closure core uh, server okay and we find p apple here okay so p apple is basically like you start as this but you quickly get okay let me stop this let me start this close this change to to here uh and let's start p apple and it started and we now go here and if i do this i get this so Apple is also bundled with Clojure and it was supposed to be like machine friendly kind of but it kind of isn't <laughs> yeah so Apple well, let's read the, this read me Apple with structured output for programs reads forms to evolve from in reader blah 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 uh, it's like a way to unnecessary details closing the input is passing the form okay let's go to return close out uh out of hand with data one of the red well blah 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 so you can actually configure it way to do something else which is cool probably right hmm. wait out of fan this default out of friend really here yeah so i think yeah so the, actually uh, if you want to start it you use eo pre, pre repo so just repo is something like reusable stuff and io pre repo is what wraps it into what we see we, we have seen there right so in our case out a fan would be uh blah 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 p r n right so mm -hmm. out 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 okay so now i'm lost a little bit so it takes std out and yeah something i don't know whatever but but anyways yeah so uh, uh the idea is it prints right so this is like slightly better um the da like you can parse output now and if i do something like print ln abc i get two of those right one is actually is the out the other one is the result uh if we throw error we get this which is um not very helpful <laughs> let me say right um because like yeah this is the val it, so it actually returns uh it doesn't uh, yeah it, it has exception true but the val is actually serialized form of the exception which is you probably cannot do much with this like what like imagine i i have this and i want to show it in in my editor right 
so what do I do, right? I, I don't want to print the whole stack trace. Well, like one option, like what is this is useful for is you can, no, you can, there are no new lines in there. So it would be like very badly formatted long, very, very long string, right? Um, yeah, so I think it starts. Uh, let me actually copy this and see. Yeah, so this is all, all one very long string without new lines. So it is terrible. Like you cannot do anything with it. You cannot get exception type. You cannot get message. Well, you kind of can if you rely on the way this is serialized, which would be very, very bad idea. You can get stack trace in uh, any discernible format, like understandable format, right? So it's, it's crazy. So it's a shame. So because like uh, PREP is relatively new and it was meant like via closure or we REPL is one of our stronger sites, right? So maybe closure has to come with a REPL. And for a long time, closure only came with command line REPL. Now it comes with socket REPL, but it's, it's very bad, right? You cannot use it really for anything. Uh, so let me write it down and then I will look in the chat. I uh, see there has been questions. Okay, so okay, so it comes bundled with closure. Uh, the other pro is um, can be run through socket trapel. Okay, let's socket. Oh, sorry, socket server. I think there's socket server REPL and they like sometimes you use two words of the three in different order. Okay, and uh, machine parse machine friendly output. Okay, now for cons. Like uh, first con is input is streaming no like and uh, what i mean by that is there's no no for real format when you send input in right so for example imagine i have written in my editor something like this uh plus one two right and i uh, imagine i did something like this and i send this for evaluation what will happen right this will just be stuck it like it wouldn't accept anything else and wouldn't send anything back like saying like hey man you did something wrong or something like that no it will just wait for more input and this is like a no go for uh, interactive for machine interaction in product no way to send income plate input for Okay, so, uh, so next con um, output is Eden might needs parser. So this is uh, like it might be a problem, might be not depends on your editor. But Eden is not the most popular format out there. So kind of uh, exception formatting is. Terrible. Exception serialization is terrible. Uh, the next con can run two things in parallel background. So, and finally, no way to interrupt. Um, evaluation okay okay let's uh let's see the chat sorry i've been uh light node is a bit hard there to read in the stream light node i'm not sure what light node is light seam maybe so it is to have rep one REPL that is good enough both for human and automation. No, 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 uh, just for automation. I don't think you can have one REPL useful for human and automation. What I what I do think though 
is that human REPL should be built on top of automation REPL, like machine readable REPL, right? Not the other way around. Like uh, the way it works right now, uh, Clojure comes with socket server, which is human oriented you're supposed to build machine oriented on top of that i think this is wrong like it's the other way around you should build machine format first and then maybe build a common client command line client on top of that right it will be much easier if something is good for a machine like you can make it work for human if something is good for human you cannot work make it work for a machine it's or it will be unnecessary hard so this is the other thing i think uh closure uh, bundled triples got wrong um, sorry for the off-topic question, but I'm curious what color scheme you use in your terminal app. The default scheme seems fine, but it doesn't work well for light systems theme for me. Um, hmm. uh, for terminal, I don't think I use anything. I think it's a basic theme. I don't think I tuned any colors at all. For Sublime, I'm using uh, my own uh, color scheme. Oh, uh, sorry. I think it's here. Uh, I'm using my own color scheme called Alabaster, and uh, there, like, there's multiple versions of it. There's Alabaster background, which highlights keywords with background color, and right? there's just normal Alabaster, which is uses like just text color, not background color. I kind of like background really. There is Mono version, which is uh, black and white strictly or almost strictly, maybe errors are not black and white, I don't remember. And there are two dark versions, so just dark and dark mono. So yeah, uh, this is what I'm using. You can get it. This is actually in package control, uh, package list packages. Yeah, so Alabaster call scheme is in package control, so you can install it through that. And it's on my GitHub as well, but it's easier to to do. I probably should have just separate um github for you know for sublime stuff because there's lots of packages uh yeah this is uh the repo and uh, there are some screenshots like this is just alabaster this is alabaster background this is dark version and there's uh two monochrome versions which is kind of cool but i eventually i i i, I like some color okay um hmm Thank me for showcasing it and writing down pros and cons. Yeah, uh, you're welcome, and I'm happy to. I'm happy you find it useful. I think I think it would be a good analysis. At least I I tried to find something like this. Uh, the best I found was unfortunately way too late. Is in Apple documentation. It has alternative sec section, and it's here. I think yeah. Yeah, uh, we get to Enrapple in, in just a second. But we kind of maybe repeating what's, what's written here. But <laughs> I did all this analysis and, and before I actually arrived in Enrapple, and Enrapple is really good. So, spoiler alert. Uh, what's the point of the streaming input is? I would assume the streaming input allows in complete forms, whereas message bias requires complete forms. Um, the point of streaming input is is that you can run it in terminal and you don't need anything else on top of it right uh, like it just works for interaction inside the terminal like if you do this you just do this and it works uh, why uh, like for example if i send this why it doesn't evaluate immediately uh, just because so I can ra send uh, multi-line um, forms. Like I can, for example, copy something like like this, uh, send it through this REPL and it will evaluate correctly. But unfortunately, if I like a selected part of the text, I want just to evaluate just that and maybe get syntax errors. If it's wrong, I cannot do that with uh, streaming. Okay, so layer translation should be possible. What are reviews on Pragmata Pro and Mona Lisa font? I, I don't understand what level, layer of translation should be possible, but maybe what you mean is this upgrade pass when 
socket repo is upgraded to machine repo it, it is possible yeah i'm not sure how it works exactly but it is certainly possible as a p repl and unrepl which are doing this what are my views on pragmata pro and one font i love the font by the way good job with it uh thank you very much uh, we need k me um so my font is I assume it's fira code but today we're not using fira code what we actually using is this it's martian mono early adopters it's a cool new uh, font from the head of design in evil martians it's uh, russian russian company small small russian company which do i don't know uh, what they do <laughs> i think they build uh, products for other companies something like that and they have design department and they have coding department and stuff like that uh so, but they've been pretty good and the head of design um Roman Shamin decided to develop the, their own font and it's very cool. You can download it yet, it's incomplete, it doesn't have Kirillix or it doesn't have accents even, but it's pretty cool. cool. Um, Pragmata Pro, I, I have bought it and it's very nice, um, but uh, it's too... it's too... too narrow for my taste i don't i don't i'm not sure why people like narrow fonts i don't like narrow fonts i like wide fonts actually uh because like yeah if you have a small monitor or notebook like you maybe want more characters on the screen but uh i usually work on external display and i don't have this problem so it's not a and i don't want to sacrifice readability i like wide letters they like read better and uh, Mona Lisa font is also a great font. Uh, this one I haven't bought, but I have tested it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's just great font, I think. Uh, my idea is you have machine wrap on them, a nice layer above that. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, how it's supposed to be happening. Okay, let's go get back to do this. Okay, so we have Pirapple here um then we have unrepl so unrepl is something i think christoph grant developed let me check yeah christoph grant um and it's pretty cool it's um like it is peter apple done right like if you would actually care about your apple and want to bundle it with closure but still decide to go with uh with um uh, with streaming input uh so, but done everything else right under apple would be that so what it does actually like so it doesn't come uh with closure can load so i think it's called upgrade i, I think it can self upgrade from circuit triple so let me show you what that means um so let's say we start um just REPL, so this is socket REPL, right? So if we connect here, we get this, okay? But then, um, hmm, let's go here. Yeah, so you see, like, yeah, let me, actually, I don't, I think I have it here. No, I can't have it here, but I can show you. Uh, so what it does, the way it works, and it's, it's pretty cool, and I think all REPLs should work like that, I think. Tootkin works kind of like that, something like that. So what, what it does is it comes with this huge file, which is supposed to be a pack from you, like you don't care what's in it. It, it has some closure code, but you don't really care what, what what's in that closure code. But um, hmm, let's see. 
what you do with it is what you do with it is let's see yeah so you get this file you send it to basically if i just take this copy paste it and connect to socket REPL. sorry to this one the one when we get this interactive input and just paste it here you can do it over network it would be probably faster uh, so now it is upgraded so now protocol has changed and now we're talking with uh, unrepl not with socket repl right so if i send something like this um, uh, i get you see i get very different result and like not before that what we were getting is just like we're just getting an uh, answer in human readable form and that's in next prompt right what we're getting now is we like we send this we get multiple messages in machine friendly format which is good right uh so one of them is read it means that we well, what it has read and basically sends you i don't know what what the purpose of this is really I, I have no idea it's maybe it is because like you can send multiple forms in a single message and it like evaluates them one after one but anyways i think this is like a unique id or something like that so then it sends you like started ul that i started but not finished and which is also cool right because you can start something and it can may it can go for a long time and you like what's going on like without answer like and here like at least it acknowledges that it understood the input and started evaluation right uh, and then finally you get eval and this is the result this id like all this have the same id uh, so you can group them like programmatically uh, and there is like the first keyword is type of the message and eval this, this is the second argument is um, depends on the first and the third one is id right so the result is three uh and then you get you get prompt i'm not sure why there are two prompts really uh there is mention of it but i don't understand it really. <laughs> what does that mean uh but yeah you get that right and you can see uh, the other things that they are doing is like for example we started a while so you get some extra information in here and one part of this information is like interrupt uh, which is basically a comment you can send and it will interrupt long running um, uh, evaluation right and there's like i don't know what background does oh it probably sends the evaluation into the background so you can evaluate next expression i'm not sure why this isn't isn't the default but whatever so uh so fundamentally unrepl is pretty cool and I, I actually started exploring it but uh as you can see it is fundamentally like built for the same in interactive pattern that prepl or socket apple are built it just it's machine readable yes but fundamentally it is built for the same pattern like you you have your terminal where you like a window at the bottom of the screen uh where you can type your commands and uh, like there's output there's prompt like you have prompt right here right so you like when you see this you're supposed to print like this user and a little arrow and stuff like that and if you want to build a REPL like this and maybe on REPL is is good choice if you don't maybe not so it's like it's very good made but still interactive so that's my my take on it all right but let's uh, interruption built in um pro machine readable format so con is uh, the output is also hidden so it needs parser so it might be hard but well, like you know right so it's the usual the usual problem um uh -huh. yeah so what else what else do we have here yeah the smart stuff right machine readable format interruption built in um it also how do you say it when you cut part of the sequence 
crops, let's say crops, crops, long responses. And uh, this is a real cool feature. So see, let's see, I sent a range from one to a hundred, all right, to, for evaluation. And what I will get in response is this. Um, so this is like first 10 elements and after that i get this strange thing it's under apple slash dot 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 it's not a mistake it's sexual keyword or rather a reader tag uh, which has a get key which has this form so if i actually send this form now right i get the next uh, part of the sequence i can do this until it finishes kind of work the same way with interruption you get the form and like this it is kind of random name and if you send it um you get you get your uh you get something out of it and it uh, it also works for um strings uh, so for example uh, let's say this so we get the string on repl slash string and it's prefix of it with some continuation right so like if you're building client you can probably draw some um, ellipses in there and you click on it and it expands further and further and stuff like that um, yeah so crops long responses this is it uh, put is needed even needs parser still fundamentally um, so it's uh, as i said it's built for clients that would like build uh, your interaction the way uh, repls have been built traditionally like uh, you open a console and you see your code there and stuff like that. Right, uh, this part and the other, the probably the third part requires separate socket for control. So let's say your long uh, evaluation started to being evaluated, right? Let me see, I have something in here. Like, let's try this. Okay, so I started and it evaluates here. And at this point, it actually, again, it stops interpreting my input. I cannot send anything in here. So if I say I want to interrupt this, I couldn't because it would ignore my input, right? So what I do is I open second socket and I upgrade the second socket and then I remember what was interrupt command from here. So I take this and I send it through the second socket and it, it, it uh, drops uh, interrupt session in, in this circuit. Okay, uh, so this is too much. Like I don't like controlling one socket is pretty hard. I don't want to control two sockets really in a client. So this was uh, unfortunately not go, but it has some really, really cool feature. I haven't think of thought about. So like upgrading your client, um, cropping long sequence of stuff, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So I'm glad this exists. Right, it's lots of inspiration. So finally, uh, finally, I think it is all alternative socket triple, hundred triple, p triple, language server protocol. I think it's uh, it doesn't code evaluation. So <laughs> like for me personally, REPL is all about code evaluation. Like I don't care about autocomplete documentation uh, and I don't know, code formatting, symbol searching, stuff like that. I can do that without REPL just fine. Uh, what I do care about, and, and I think it's like, it's bad when you need running closure machine to do that, really like symbol searching or autocomplete if it relies on a working connection to running closure application with your code. 
uh, I think it creates more problems that it solves because like sometimes you have this connection, sometimes you don't. So sometimes you have after complete, sometimes you don't. Uh, like it basically requires you to always have this connection and always keep it working, crying and working state. And I'm not really ready to guarantee that it's hard to, to do that, I would say. So I prefer solutions that might be less accurate, but work always. Like for example, in, uh, if I work in here, I, I can actually, I get autocomplete, right? But it works like inside Sublime. It doesn't require you like working on your application. It doesn't require your application. And there's, I think there's go to single as well. So let's say uh, go to definition. Yeah, here it is. So yeah, <laughs> it works. And I like this much more than having a like working application somewhere. It. So for me, like the only thing I want from REPL is code evaluation. Um, yeah, and yeah, we can, we can have um, this table. So this is how I eventually arrived at an REPL. And the, the reason I initially dismissed an REPL uh, was re silly, really. Um, it is because it require it cannot be upgraded so pass from socket server so unrapple is binary protocol and no, like not that probably unrapple is very old and probably when it existed the idea of upgrading your socket server certainly didn't exist back then uh, the idea of upgrading socket servers so couldn't exist either. Uh, so they don't, I don't think they have this yet. I think they have um, like an issue about that. Let's see. Upgrade. Yeah, injection or whatever. So Christoph Grant uh, reasonably opened this. Uh, and it's not solved yet, as, as far as I understand. But OK, this is a bummer. But the reason I am probably sticking with Andrew Apple is because everything else is really, really good, right? So everything else is like exactly my thoughts like if i would design your apple if i haven't seen another apple but i have seen this mess right i would probably make all the same decisions and I, I really like except this upgrade pass i would probably have upgrade pass but okay so uh let's go with pros right so first it is real machine oriented and what I mean by machine oriented, okay, let's start an end REPL. Uh, no, we can we can do that. We can start end REPL here, and what we can do is I think if we um, I have debugger for it, okay. So let's say hmm, uh, I, I just want to show off, like I want to show how it works. Okay. So yeah, I think you say like something like op eval uh, code plus one two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to bean code reading. What I have here. Okay. So let's restart this. Uh, and what we want, we want this. So I, I write this in JSON, but it's not actually sent in JSON. It is sent as binary string like that. And the format used here is bean code, right? So bean code is a super dumb, super simple protocol uh, created for torrents, right? And it only supports least dictionary st strings and integers, I think. I don't think there is null in it, 
I don't think there are booleans in it. So it's like it's really very limited, but it's easy to parse. It's super easy and trivial to parse, right? So now we send something like this. So like I type this as um, as JSON, it parses as JSON, but then converted to Python structures and then sent over as uh, this string, basically. It's binary string, right? So if I can say binary data. And what I respond in response, I get something like this, which is again being coded string and it's parsed like if it would be JSON, it would be a JSON like this, and as user session, blah, 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 maybe this, right? And then I get uh, status done, which is good to know, I suppose, right? So uh, we are going to write it. Um, maybe JSON would be better choice. Uh, I do think they have something like that um, in in REPL. I haven't really played with it yet, um, but but probably you can run JSON. I, I don't know if there is a reason to or not, or may, should I do it or not? I don't know. I'm not sure yet, but uh, we can do bean code as well, right? Bean code, like I actually found somewhere, I found Python implementation from Chas Emmerich himself. So it's a guy who invented in REPL as well. And I think he wrote a closure implementation for it, like because he needed it, like, and he wrote Python implementation. It's, it's really, it's really, small i think it's it could be slightly smaller than this even i don't know that this object is about really uh this my this is my client command line so i can play with it and debug and repl and yes yeah, so it, it's it's pretty trivial okay uh the next thing so what what else is good about it uh serialization um real machine oriented uh, we have uh, machine, machine, and uh, message based input, not streaming based. So, as you can see, I can actually send incomplete form like this because, because, like. And I don't just like put form on a stream, I wrap it in a message, right? And message, of course, has to be well informed, but the code inside the message, actual code that I want to evaluate, it doesn't have to be well formed, okay? So this is this. I just let me check if we are recording. We are recording. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so this is it kind of right uh, oh sorry yeah um uh, <laughs> sorry i started looking at uh, if i am recording this or not yeah i'm recording it it's okay um because i, I think this review of repos might be useful for other people as well and even until we started coding anything just looking at what options exist so yeah it it was very interesting for me like i didn't know any of the stuff so i had to do some research but it was very uh interesting and illuminating and apparently not many people or not much effort has been spent on repls uh even though repl again is so important for closure it's like it, it has good support like language is repl friendly from the start right and REPL is superpower, I think, in my opinion. So it's strange to see that not that much effort has been spent on it. from core team, from other projects and stuff like that. But and REPL is good. And I, I suppose like CIDR is good as well. So like a lot of effort has been definitely spent there at least, but it's like limited for Emacs, unfortunately. But anyways, yeah, and we are in Sublime. So yeah, you see, uh, like I sent an incomplete form here, right? And what I get in response, I get error, <laughs> I get exception, okay, but whatever. Uh, I don't know why there are two of them, but, um, but yeah, that, that illustrates that it doesn't wait for me to close this pattern, right? It just reports your your exception and um, can send not well 
font forms. Okay, uh, the other pro uh, interruption built in I think, okay, let me, I don't really remember it, but I think it is here. So what we are going to do is we're going to do this actually. Um, okay, let's see. So we're going to evaluate this code. We are going also to send a session. Uh, I believe this is important. I believe our session is called something like this. So we're using this and we are going to save, save ID. So our, our ID would be XYZ, okay? So we try, we try to evaluate this code. So this code uh, prints uh, 100 numbers with waiting one second between numbers, right? So, okay, we send this and we're supposed to start seeing, uh, did I mess something up? Uh, no, uh, no. For some, for some reason, this is not working. Okay, let me check. Let's remove session for now. Yeah, okay, I don't know, something with session, uh, but anyways, so it starts evaluating, right? So it prints numbers and like sends me messages like, hey, this was printed. Um, yeah, okay, actually, you know what, uh, let me remove, like, after I showed you binary encoding, it's not really useful to see it, it's hard to read, so there's no reason for it to exist, it just confuses everything, right? Um, and let's send this code again. Okay, and we start again. Okay, so now we have this code and it's like sends USTD out, which is fine. We have this session and we, by, by the way, it doesn't block you from evaluating other codes. So you can like have one process being working in one session and another, and you can actually evaluate different uh, expressions and it doesn't wait for first one to finish. Oh, like we got a 666 in uh, session number call. Um, and what we are going to do, we are going to interrupt the first evaluation before it, before it finished and we need interrupt ID. Okay. Uh, and so I believe the thing we are supposed to interrupt, uh, interrupt ID is XYZ. Let's see if it understands. Uh-huh. Okay, so because we didn't create really a real session, uh, it, it has problems with us. So okay, whatever. Let's 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 uh, let's do it right this time. Okay, so first thing is what we need to do is um, is this. And so this creates a session. So now we have a session. Now we are going to evaluate this code. What do you mean unknown session? We just just created it. How how could it be unknown? Oh, we, I, sorry, I, I copied the wrong number. I supposed to copy new session, not old session. Okay, so we do this right. Evaluation starts. Now we go to interrupt. I was interrupt and we pass session here as well. Boom, we interrupted, right? Cool. So we can evaluate in parallel, which is um, can evaluate in parallel. I don't think you can evaluate like do. Let's see. Let's, let's start this process again. And now let's try if we can, for example, sum two numbers in the same session. So I think sessions work trickier. Yeah, you can't, you can't, right? Uh, yeah, but you can create new sessions, right? So you can create new sessions. 
uh, before you start, kind of. So I don't know. I have no idea why it works this, this way, why it doesn't copy session like for for each relation, for example, that would think like it's it's harder, a little bit harder than I imagine it should be, but uh, maybe there's a good reason for it. Maybe not, I don't know, parallel. There's still like lots of good times. Extendables through middleware. Um, another complaint I have is is raw reporting, which is better. Uh, so let's say we want to evaluate something like this. We want uh, raw new exception. like this right so the problem with exceptions like code that shows exceptions is you get this and this is standard error right so it kind of prints your exception it doesn't print stack or does print stack trace i'm not sure but uh, the point is, is this is std error right so it's just what gets printed so it's like it's, you're not even sure that this is from your your code actually let's see if i put id here well, I can, you can link it with ids but okay and the second thing is like if you instead print something before like uh, it's it's a mess okay and then you get the exception so this is special type of message which is like hey exception happened so here's your exception right and what it gives you is it gives you this strange string which has the word class for some reason in, in in front and exception type exception type is good the word class i'm not sure what's the purpose for this but the strange thing and it gives you root cause as well like yeah uh, in closure in java you have like cause and root cause right so there is a way for one exception to wrap another exception usually it's you don't care about the wrapper usually you care about the root almost like in my practice you always need the root never the wrappers but they made an effort and distinguished uh, like just exception and root exception which is great but they don't give you for example message which would be like the most obvious thing to do right so in java let me show you even the throw well, the only thing that uh, unites all exceptions in java is that they have a message like every exception in java has a message like it's like it doesn't have it, it can have extra stuff depending on exception type but every one of them has a message so it's like a message usually is a tight concise string explaining what went wrong so it seems like an obvious thing to include here but we cannot see it right uh, you can say that it get printed to um, uh, is it the error which is fair enough ish but it like if i like work on program i don't want to parse a cd error right and there's like also this execution error this place and location which i don't care if you relate from REPL really and then there is like in between those there is like your message it would be pain in this to parse it so this is what uh, this is the part i don't like me i am considering sending a pull request for it but for now what i was been able to do is to write a middleware that actually provides this information it wasn't easy but was uh, uh, it uh, all all end is what end uh, ends well right uh And the other thing is that is missing is exception data, right? So like this was for Java messages are in Java in closure. Uh, there is a special exception. I think it's called exception info. 
no there's not but anyways you, you create it with closure like that and the difference between closure exceptions and java exceptions well closure exceptions are java exceptions so there is a message you can see here but you can also attach a date uh, a map with arbitrary data right and you can like when you catch it you can look into this data and like for closure it would also make sense probably to include that in um in here yeah, but it's not here um kind of right so non grid pass uh is a bummer uh what i've been thinking about is maybe write my own REPL that can work like an REPL. um um this is i'm not sure about as far as i understand middleware middleware are global because you don't specify session in here actually you know what let's say we print middleware there's also side loader which is very interesting there is like load file uh, it's it's good okay so So you can load files. So I assume if you load the file, you can specify file name and file pass. And then if the errors comes back, it will report the correct line number in that file, which is pretty good, I'd say. Um, describe completions. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually the one thing that I forgot to write here. Yeah, this needs uh, to be checked. Uh, huge ecosystem. I think CLJS and others come with like with it, right? So Clojure script support, Clojure Agnostic protocol, optimized for tooling. Yeah, so you can do, for example, Clojure script with it as well, and uh, like, I don't know, other stuff. There are probably middlewares for reason for it, like, uh, I don't know, probably Cider, I don't know. I, I don't know, like, uh, I know this is a very, um, very popular project, so I assume, like, and Emacs is based on it, so assume it has it's mature and it has stuff figured out and it has lots of stuff and they have cool logo right so this logo is pretty cool i i think i designed it really <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but it's very nice to see it um so yeah uh, we're going please and apple um <laughs> but uh here have it um so the the resolution of it is we're going to write my own client for sublime repl for a plugin for sublime repl that will communicate with um and repl for now right so i figured and repl is the best here way to go here we have to eat uh, this problem like yeah but you cannot do anything about it maybe it will be solved maybe we'll figure a way figure out a way around it um this problem i've already solved this uh one doesn't bother me as much because the middleware that i wrote is actually compatible backwards compatible so there's no problem here um so yeah okay i'm going to uh stop recording i'm not going to stop the stream stream is going on uh stop recording real quick and continue in a different video the, the actual development we're going to start the actual development so let me do that